Good afternoon. My name is Hilda. I'm 78 days post ACDF surgery for a four level fusion. As you can see, I'm out of the stiff collar that I wore for two months. I only wear the collar when I'm outside or riding in a vehicle. I had my medical checkup after two months post-surgery. It did not show any uh, bone growth, and I'm told that that doesn't happen for a while. I want to play some uh, segments of a medical video from a physician in California that I think gives a very good overview of the ACDF process. I found his presentation very informative, professional, and instructive, and I think you will too. I'm not sure about the YouTube rules about how much of his video I can load on my video, so I'm just doing a few clips. Welcome to the Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Sue, a fellowship trained spine surgeon in Marin, California. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. Today we'll be talking about one of my favorite operations and in fact one of the most successful surgeries we do in spine surgery called the anterior cervical discectomy and fusion. And I want to comment about, uh, from a patient's perspective, some of the um, statements uh, that he makes in his video. I can tell you that um, at 78 days, I have a lot of neck pain. After we take the disc completely out, we have to put something in its place. And there's two different options. One is something called structural allograft, which is basically donated cadaveric bone. And this is what it looks like. So this is literally bone donated from a cadaver that has been irradiated, meaning it doesn't have disease. So this is what it looks like. It's very small and it's about the size of a disc. So there it is top down and here it is up down. And what we do is after there's a space, we take this implant and we insert it into where the disc used to be. The other option is a plastic or metal cage. And a plastic or metal or cage looks like that. Sometimes your surgeon will elect to use a cage. This cage often has a hole in it. There's a side view there. And the reason the cage has a hole in it is because it can be filled with some bone grafting substance. Now, when we use a cage, we take the cage and we place the cage inside and that maintains the height of the disc. The bone graft and the plastic cage are there so that the bone can grow through and through for a fusion. Well, fusion is a biological process that takes six months to a year, so we have to put in plates and screws to give it biomechanical stability to allow the bone to grow through and through. Once the bone is totally fused, the plates are useless. We don't take them out, but they are needed for initial fixation. So this is what a plate looks like. This is a two-level anterior cervical plate and it has, has holes in it for the screws to go in. So what happens is once we take the disc out, we then take the plate and we affix the plate to the front of the spine. And then we drive screws through these holes so that the spine has stability. I can tell you that uh, my range of motion is limited because I had a four level fusion. Patients always tell me they don't want a fusion because they don't want their neck to be locked in place and walking around like a robot and feel super stiff. Interestingly, if you fuse one or two level in someone's neck, they have no perceptible loss of motion compared to before the fusion. When you fuse three or more levels, then you start getting a little bit of stiffness. Something to understand is that this is the front back view of your neck and at the C1, C2 level, which is the no motion, there's 50% of rotation. And at the base of the skull in C1 level, which is this and here, which is the yes motion, is also 50% of flexion extension. This in fact means that if you fuse someone's entire cervical spine, meaning if you were to fuse someone from here to here, which is highly unusual, just maintaining the base of the skull in C1 and C1, C2 would maintain 50% of your range of motion. There is and um, one of the things that this doctor says in his presentation 
is that the failure rate for fusion is 10% per disc that you lose. Well, I lost four, so is that a 40% prospective failure rate? And because it is a fusion and we're relying on the bones to grow through and through, there is a risk of non-union, meaning the bones don't actually fuse. Now, having a non-union is not always a problem because most non-unions are asymptomatic, meaning if the bones don't successfully fuse, that doesn't always translate to problems or pain because it can sometimes be a fibrous non-union which means instead of being bone through and through, it's very fibrous tissue, so it's very stable and very solid and is therefore asymptomatic. However, if you do develop pain from a non-union, we would have to go back and place little screws in the back of the neck and these little bones here to attach them. That gives biomechanical stability so the front of the spine can fuse. That's called a posterior cervical fusion. The rate of non-union, which remember doesn't always translate to additional surgery, is pretty high. It's about 10% for a single level anterior cervical fusion. And obviously, as you go up in the number of levels, that non-union rate goes up. So for a two level, it's around 20% and a three level around 30%. Patient. And as disheartening as that sounds, what are the alternatives? I made a comment to my husband, would you jump out of an airplane if your parachute only had a 60% chance of opening? And his witty comment was, well, if the airplane was going to crash, what option do you have? And really, you don't. If you have four discs, like I did, that were uh, pushed over into your spinal cord and pinch, pinching it almost two together to where it was potentially damaging the nerves and puts you at risk of being a quadriplegic if you fell or something, what option do you have? If you're 65 or older, I'm told you can't have an artificial disc. And the FDA only allows two artificial discs. So if you need four, like I did, that's not going to happen. I have been contracted, uh, contacted a uh, medical provider in Berlin that will do more than two. And then I was told, no, you're over 65, you can't have an artificial disc. And I studied about the artificial disc and they do have their own issues. So, so this is where I am today at 78 uh, days out. And um, what's aggravating is the the inability to, to sleep well at night because of the the uncomfortableness in my neck. And I do have some crepitus that I'm hearing when I move my, my neck. Um, I'm thinking about trying one of those soft cervical collars and wearing that at night to keep my neck from bending in odd positions on the pillow or as I move during the night to see if that helps with the pain that I feel in the morning. I won't wear this cervical collar, the spongies, you know, soft collar during the day, I just at night and try that for a few nights and see if that makes a difference. Um, the swallowing, yes. I'm still having problems swallowing anything uh, that's got a lot of consistency to it, even though you masticate or chew it up very well. Um, it's still kind of hard to swallow anything that's kind of uh, like meat, uh, steak. Uh, if you, you know, uh, even though you chew it up, it's still kind of hard to swallow it. Uh, do not take those large calcium pills. They will not, well, I couldn't get it to go down. It got stuck and I thought I was just, don't panic. Don't panic, just cough it up. Uh... Some pressure is placed on the adjacent level. For example, in this patient, because we fuse C5-6 and C6-7, the level above is gonna take up a little bit more force and the level below is gonna take up a little bit more force. In general, there's about a 3% per year chance if you take a snapshot x-ray every year of somebody that had a fusion, that they would have degeneration. 
That means that 10 years is a 30% chance of having degenerative changes above or below the fusion. Of course, that means there's a 70% chance you might not. Now, not all those patients are symptomatic and not all those patients need surgery. Ultimately, only a third of those need surgery. So really, the rate of adjacent level surgery, meaning needing another surgery because you had a fusion, is about 1% per year per level. So at 10 years, a 10% chance of perhaps needing revision surgery at the level above or below the fusion. Adjacent level disease is a natural consequence of fusing the spine. It doesn't mean you shouldn't have a fusion, it just means that you should be aware that there is a potential of developing some adjacent level disease. Remember Peyton Manning had a couple of failed posterior surgeries before having a successful two level ACDF and he won the Super Bowl after. So if it's okay to play NFL football after you're fused, then it's probably okay for you. Postoperatively, I do require my patients for a single level to wear a soft cervical collar, which is a foam collar for six weeks for a one level surgery. And for a two or three level surgery, I require a hard cervical collar, which is plastic for 12 weeks. I typically start physical therapy at around the 12 week time, no matter how many levels we fuse. And at four months, I let patients go back to the gym. Actual biological fusion, meaning the bone actually growing through and through, and being stable and solid takes about six months to a year. I typically don't let patients do impact activities, high level activities for at least six months and sometimes we even get a CT scan to make sure they're fused before we let them do extreme sports. 90% of patients are fused at a year and almost all patients, if they're gonna fuse, are fused at two years. And once the spine is fused and solid, you do not have to worry about that level at all. You don't have to worry about anything else recurring at that level. So an anterior cervical fusion is one of the most successful surgeries we have, one of the most time-tested surgeries we have. 